wrong, but I love it. Use some pie cups. Welcome, make the code search. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to talk about a table this evening. Um, many are on deck right now, but here's here's one right out of Matthew 24. It's uh, it's a term we hear called the elect. Who are the elect? Uh, and who are the elect in the codes? What does the codes confirm? You're going to be amazed, I believe, and some probably not amazed. Probably it's going to confirm something in you who the elect is because when I saw it, I knew or I had known already in my heart it to be true when I saw it. So it was without a doubt another one of those moments in the code when you just know the codes are confirming what Yahuwah means. Uh, let's, let us get away from believing that the codes are there for us to predict the future, folks. That has been uh, a tragic belief in this community because there have been some that come out, and I'll call them half-truthers, who may not be very skilled in Hebrew or how the Bible code works, and they put out tables with very you know stringent predictions of this is going to happen this is what i see and you know with no anointing there things and in, in places and beings and times pass by and nothing happens and in the first thing people want to say is oh well, it's you know the bible's it's, the codes are fake because you're not good for predicting uh th those predictions failed folks look this is bigger than just your notion of, the, of it being a crystal ball or it being a parlor trick or even being wacky. Uh, I've been called you know, messing with those wacky Bible codes. Uh, I look at it as a kadosh gift of Yahuwah. And, uh, he has shown something to me in this, and I'm absolutely 100% sure on it. There's no... Uh, interpreting what I see there is absolute but let's just start with Matthew 24 this is the uh, what is, is known as the um, Olivet Discourse it is a perfect outline of the end of, end of days folks this is when the disciples asked Yeshua tell us when the end will come and how is it going to happen and this is what what takes place and I'm going to start with, with Matthew 24 verse 1 and Yeshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yeshua said to them, See ye not these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be one stone, one upon another, and shall not be thrown down. That was a prophecy out of the mouth of the Messiah, which would be a witness to all that heard of what was to come. Seventy years later, folks, that was fulfilled. Then, let's continue on in this uh, outline. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. Very interesting place. That's where it's all going to culminate, folks. When he comes back, he's going to step his foot down on the Mount of Olives. It's going to cleave in two, as it's predicted in Zechariah. Uh, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? I mean, they were concerned. They wanted to know what, what's going to happen, you know, as do we all around this uh, eschatog eschatological uh, community. And you sure answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And indeed, folks, and tragically, there is uh, a group who used the codes to propagate a cult who uh, uh, parade around uh, imposter as, as Yeshua, come back. Yet there are no nail-scarred hands so that uh, Zechariah can be fulfilled where it says, where did you get those piercings? He said, in the house of my friends. Yet there's no cleaved mount uh, of, uh, of olives. And yet this, this group, uses the codes for evil to convince people that the Messiah is here. Yet this is what it says right here. Out of Yeshua's mouth, he says, shall deceive many using the codes. 
and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is yet not. The nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. These are the seals he's describing here. And it's clear, he says here, and it's another access term in the codes, which gives us a, a data point, a, a benchmark in time. These are the beginning of sorrows, which was clear to me was before the tribulation. Beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you to be afflicted. Boy, do I know. And shall kill you. Now, I haven't been killed, but uh, many have. You've seen the news. They're hanging Christians. They're beheading Christians. Yet ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And he didn't say my title's sake. He said for my name's sake. And then shall be, uh, and shall mean, excuse me, and then shall many be offended. Has anybody been offended out there? And shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. These are the times we're in now. And because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. He shall endure unto the end. The same shall be saved. And this gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations. And then shall the end come. But then Yeshua does something really, really strange. He quotes uh, or, or, or cites something that has already happened verbatim, folks. And, and many people are looking for this today. When you're talking about the abomination of desolation, Technically, that's already happened, folks, and it happened before the time of Yeshua. Matthew is making a note of it here when you see this, and he says, And we, ye therefore, shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. He is specifying right here. Stand in the holy place. Matthew then says, in parentheses, Whosoever readeth, let him understand. And what he's telling you here is, this has already taken place. We already know this to be taken place. The Maccabees has already happened, and we're going to talk about that in another video, folks. With Hanukkah, uh, what, what the connection of Maccabees, that was before Yeshua. This was the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. This is when that happened. And why is Yeshua citing this as if it hasn't happened? Matthew is telling you, be smart here. He's, he's telling you something. This is going to take place again in another way. It may be a, some sort of spiritual parallel. But he says, let them which is in Judea flee unto the mountains. And him which is on the house top not uh, come down to take anything out of his house. He's saying, get out of there. Don't even grab your bags. Just go. Neither let him which is in the field turn back and take his clothes. You don't even go home from work and get your stuff. Get out of town. Go. And he said, woe to them that are with child. And to give suck in those days. Pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as never uh, was or since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. And except those days be shortened. This is a crucial bit of information. Why is he saying this? Why is he saying except those days be shortened? And how does this play a part? And it plays a huge part, folks, in that seven-year tribulation period because he's telling us let there should be no flesh saved for but for the elect's sake. Here we go. Who are the elect? For the elect's sake, those days be short. And if any man is saying to you, Lo, here is Christ, and there, believe it not, but there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. And show great signs and wonders. And so much that were, if it were possible. Shall deceive the very elect. Who is the elect? Who are these people? Is it, is it the church? Yes. That's that's partly true. But it, it, I'm going to take it a step further. And show you exactly who that is. Because this goes. This goes way back. To the time of. Uh, Ezekiel. Chapter 4. And there are curses going on 
because of iniquity and uh, the, the fullness of Gentiles plays a part and we're going to find out who that is but I'm going to try to tie all that together without uh, confusing you with with this little um, presentation so uh, bear with me going through the all of it if any man says unto you lo there is Christ believe it not for there shall rise false prophets false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders and as much as if it were possible shall deceive the very elect those that are ones we're talking about here elect. behold I have told you before he is iterating that wherefore if they shall say unto you behold he is in a desert go forth uh, go not forth behold he is in a secret chamber believe it not for as the lightning cometh out of the east shineth even to the west so shall the be coming of the Son of Man. And wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation, I want you to see this. Immediately after the tribulation, Yeshua said, you shall see tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, what days? These days we're in now shall be the sun uh, the sun shall be dark well we just came through a tra a, a tetrad of, of four of those which was four stop signs on jewish feast days where you who is saying pay attention pay attention pay attention pay attention something's coming there's a seven year stretch where there's another three and a half uh, uh three and a half years and there's a triad sun is darkened moon turns to blood same thing three and a half years later which is a seven year pattern here we are in those days. The sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. We have yet to see that. I believe that will be uh, when we get into Revelation 8 and uh, also Isaiah 24 when it, the earth totters to and fro, folks. That is yet to happen. Um, And then shall appear the Son of Man. Who? The Son of Man. We're talking about two different beings here. There's the Ancient of Days spoken of by Daniel, by John, and by Enoch. The Ancient of Days and the Son of Man. Who is that? That's Yahuwah. And the right arm, the right hand, the Son of Man, Yeshua. That's who. That's who he's seeing here. And then shall be the Son of Man appear. He's referring to himself. The sign of the Son of Man shall appear. And in heaven shall be all the tribes of the earth mourn. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. So there will be an, a sign of the Son of Man coming then to let us know that He's coming. I mean, it's not the actual event. There's a sign, then the actual event. So that is what's been said. So there shall appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall the tribes mourn, earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming then of heaven with power and great glory. And then shall his angels, here's where I want you to pay attention, then shall his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, they shall gather together his elect from the four winds in one end of heaven unto the other. And it tells the angels in scripture and we, we will read this in other places where he says go to the four corners of the earth and ha where the harvest is right thrust thy sickle into the earth for the harvest is right um, gather my elect from the four corners who is this well I want to show you something from uh, the ten lost tribes and this is where it all happens the center of it is because of uh, the great sin of Solomon you have divided the kingdom into two parts. That's what we're talking about here, folks. When you, want, you want to know who your identity is? I'm following fixing to show you because uh, when when they went into Egypt at roughly 70, 75, some, some say, they come out roughly 200 years, 400, some say, as 11 million. Then imagine if they go scattered into the world for 2,700 and some years and then are gathered back. How much? How many are there? 
what is the number? The exponential growth of a, of a people, of nations. We're not just talking about the Jews, folks. This is the, the 12 tribes. There are 10 that are scattered. They're scattered to the four corners. These 10 tribes. They go into the nations. They are you and me. Ephraim, Manasseh, I mean Gad, Asher, Nephtali, all of these became the nations and, and went to all the nations. And this is what Yahuwah showed me when I had a vision of this. He scattered them like wheat in a field among the tares. There were tares already there when he scattered it among the nations. So they grew up among the tares. This is us. This is us. You know who you are. The word says that they will be sealed. I want you to see this. Let's go to uh, Revelation 7. And I want you to see this before we get into the table, folks. Please hang in there. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any any tree. And have you ever, ever been in a situation like that I have around here in this wilderness I'm in? Where there's a dead silence, not a breeze, not a sound. It is just dead, just eerie. That's what is going to happen. This silence in heaven. I saw another angel sending from the east, having the seal of the living Elohim. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, not yet, till we have sealed the servants of our Elohim and their foreheads. Who is that? That's the elect, folks. That's you. That's me. That's those who are called by his name. You are part of those nations. You didn't think you had Hebrew in you, did you? You do. Hundreds of millions. The exponential growth of 2,700 years is, is in the hundreds of millions. Uh, you know, Hitler tried to extinguish the Jews. And we're talking about the, the, the ones who, who stayed as a nation who didn't assimilate. They were not scattered. They stayed together. They went to Poland, to Hungary, to Latvia, to Czechoslovakia. They became Hungarian Jews, Polish Jews. But they was a nation and within a nation. But they were driven. What happened to Israel? Ephraim. They were scattered for so many years. They would be lost. Lost to who? Lost to us. We don't know. We don't know. You don't know uh, who you are unless he reveals it to you. He will reveal it to you. You know in your spirit the Ruach HaKodesh will awaken you. And that's what he did. And I'll tell you when it was. You know when it was. It was 2009. And I want to show you something uh, before we get a little further. Ezekiel, fourth chapter. This is something that was required of Ezekiel to do that people say, why did, he, why did you have him do that? It was for now, so that you can see the manifestation of this prophecy coming to truth. Thou also, son of man, take ye a tie, take thee a tie, and lay it before thee, and betray upon the city, even Jerusalem, and lay siege against it, and build a fort against it, cast a mount against it, and set a camp also against it, and I set battering rams against it, and a roundabout, more of a take unto thee an iron pan, all this weird stuff he's having him do, and set it for a wall, of iron between thee and the city, and set thy face against it. He shall lay his face upon this iron pan, and it shall be besieged, and thou shalt lay siege against it. And this shall be a sign to the house of who? Israel. Who is that? That's you and me. That's not the Jews. The Jews are Judah and Benjamin and some of Manasseh. This is the ten nations that are scattered. Okay. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. And I want you to follow this very closely. 
lie upon thy side, left side and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it. And according to the number of days that thou shalt lay upon it, thou shalt bear their iniquity. So pay attention now. But I have laid upon thee the years of the iniquity, according to the number of days, 390 days. So thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And then when thou hast accomplished it, lie again on thy right side, and I shall bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. So this is two different punishments, two different curses going out to these for their rebellion. For I have appointed thee each day for a year. Therefore thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thine arm shall be uncovered. And thou shalt prophesy against it, and behold, I will lay hand, bands upon thee. And thou shalt not turn thy uh, thee from this one side or the other, till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. So in the midst of the siege going on, Ezekiel is required to do something physical that is going to be a sign to the house of Israel. And I want to show you here. And this is uh, what I want you to see. Where we start here. Because of the sin of Solomon, Yahuwah divided the kingdom into two parts. The northern kingdom was made up of ten tribes as the house of Joseph, uh, the house of Israel. Listen, this is all the same people. This is all, it, it, just put in AKA in between each one of these. So it's the house of Joseph, AKA, the house of Ephraim, AKA, the house of Israel. They're all the same. It's the ten tribes. The southern kingdom was known as Judah. This is where we get Jews from. So there's, all of them would be Hebrew, and then you have Judah, or where the Jews come from. Um, the northern kingdom had sinned greatly against you, and changed the festivals and the laws, so the people would not go back to Jerusalem when they were in captivity. So Yahuwah scattered them, the northern kingdom to the four corners of the earth because of these sins. Yahuwah said, they would not be known by the tongue which they spoke, nor the color of their skin. This would be assimilation. However, he said in the last days, that he would again gather these lost tribes, lost, and bring them back to Israel. In Genesis 48, 19, Jacob blessed Ephraim, and he said he would become, here we go, the fullness of the Gentiles. There's your evidence right there in Genesis 48, who the Gentiles are, the fullness of the Gentiles is. Most people say that's the church age. It is. The stumbling block was for two kingdoms, the Jews and uh, Ephraim, who had gone whoring after other idols and, and you know, mixing. Uh, but they were not forgotten. He did not forgotten them. Israel, he loves. And it says, Jacob blessed Ephraim and said he would become the fullness of the Gentiles. This is the correct interpretation of this verse. If you go back to the Hebrew text, you'll find this to be true. In Isaiah 8, 14, And he shall be a sanctuary, but for a stumbling block, for a rock of offense, for both houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. We shall all understand that Judah, the southern kingdom, stumbled in seeing Yeshua as the Messiah. However, few realized that the other house was the northern kingdom. And they stumbled over being able to see that the covenant was still in place. Folks, Yeshua did not come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. What law? There are many. We're talking about uh, laws. Uh, commandments, statutes, there, this is very broad, uh, court that we're talking about here. What did he come to fulfill? Sacrificial law. He came to be the sacrifice, the lamb that was led to the slaughter for sins to cover the sins, to take away the sins, not to cover, to take away the sins, not. A, so, um, they didn't see this as, uh, you know, he was fulfilling the sacrificial law and he still observed festivals. He was still kosher, folks. <laughs> Yeshua was a Torah Jew. 
And you ask any rabbi who is a Torah Jew, they call him a rabbi, a false Messiah is what they call him. And they did not see, this is the Jews, that did not see the veil was there, as Paul puts it in Romans, for your benefit. He gave the Gentiles what, this is where the, uh, the, the, the nations blended in and became the nations, Gentiles are going. See, they got the revelation, the Jews did. Now we're seeing this come back. And there is a thing called the the grafting of the two sticks. This is this this is it. This is Ephraim and Judah. These people of the northern kingdom had become the fullness of the Gentiles, not knowing they were the lost tribes. And I want to just correct this right here. In those days, and I'm talking about in Yeshua's days, they were the beginning of the fullness of Gentiles. We are in now the fullness. What is the fullness? Like it's a cup that runs over. We, When you get to the top, that would be the fullness. The fullness where it runs over, where it's overflowing. That's the fullness in the beginning of the church. That would be the beginning of the fullness of the Gentiles. And I just want to make a correction in here, and this from this author. Not knowing that there were ten tribes. When Yeshua came to this earth, the northern kingdom was drawn to the Messiah, and the southern kingdom was blinded by Yahuwah. That they could not see him as the Messiah, but they kept the law. Thus, both kingdoms stumbled. In Hosea 7, 8, Ephraim has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned, so he's cooked on one side. He's not cooked on the other. He don't have Yeshua and the law. What are we talking about here? We're not talking about uh, 613 laws. We're talking about uh, Yahuwah's statutes, his commandments, things that were not changed. Were, you know, his, he said, these are my holy days. These are special to me. They are his. We're not to change them. What happens with Ephraim? He mixed himself among the people. And Ephraim is a kick not turn. He is saying Ephraim has the Messiah, but not the law. In Hosea 8, 11 through 12, uh, verse 11 through 12, because Ephraim, Ephraim hath made many altars to sin, altars shall be unto him sin. I have written to him great things of my law, but they counted but they were counted a strange thing. And you can see that today with Ephraim. Those that don't want to touch the Messianic stuff. Uh, yeah, because it's a strange thing to them. That's why it's, this is where you got it right here. Hosea prophesied that. Most of the church today is the northern kingdom. And they don't even know it. Yahuwah is now beginning to gather them together to one day bring them back to the nation of Israel and the land Yahuwah gave to our forefathers. The shofar has been sounded in the eyes of Ephraim or the beginning of open. So let me just show you what, what we're talking about here. Uh, when I read Ezekiel 4, this was the northern kingdom incurred a 390 year curse, which had started approximately around 721 to 725 BC. But there was a complication. And that, that was described in the book of Hosea. According to the, uh, the Israelites had not stopped sinning. We've got to go back and read Hosea 5. But what happens here is in Leviticus 26, there's an answer. Um, so let's go there. And I know we are running 30 minutes before we even get into the table, folks. But this, I promise you it's going to be worth it. In Leviticus, Yahuwah tells us that he will bring seven times more plague upon you according to your sins. Seven times, uh, it, it says here, seven times for your sins, I will punish you. Um, I will then, therefore, also walk contrary unto you, and I will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And, uh, and it also tells you what happens when uh, those are break, broken. Um, Sorry, I almost lost my place there. Um, but here's where, where we find that answer. So if we do the math, and, and this is seven times 390. So what happens is, well, according to Leviticus 26, if you are cursed under this covenant 
and uh, are not forgiven later, a terrible thing happens. The curse is multiplied by seven. That's what I was trying to point out to you there. 390 times seven equals 2730. So 725 B.C. plus 270 uh, equals 2005. Or 721 B.C. plus 2730 is 2009. And that is when, I believe, the Great Awakening happened. That's when the, the veil started falling off of your eyes and you started seeing things of Yahuwah. You started seeing things like his name. You started seeing his feast. You started seeing the things in, in, in the stars that he was doing. Huh? Come on now. You know who you are. He has already sealed you. You know who you are. And by exponential growth. We're not just talking about 144,000 folks. This 144,000 uh, are sealed of the tribes. All 12 tribes. But they are ministers to a greater multitude. And I want you to follow me here. Because right after that in, in verse 9 of chapter 7. And it says in this. And I beheld a great, a low, great multitude. Right after numbering the sealed 144,000 preachers of the tribulation, they will be sealed. They will not be touched. They are the elect and the great multitude. It's all together. They're not just 144. It's 144,000 and the uh, millions and millions and millions and millions. More than it can be numbered as it says here in chapter 9. That's who shall be gathered. That's who shall be gathered. All right. Folks, so now um, I want to take you, and you please just hang in there. 30 minutes, we haven't got to the table yet, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. Okay, here we go. Jeremiah 31, and I want you to get this. This is, this is deep. And at the same time, saith Yahuwah, that I will be the Elohim of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Adonai, The people which left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him rest. The Adonai hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. He's drawing you, folks. You, that awakening that happened, he was drawing you out of that sleep. Again I will build thee, and thou shalt be mine, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tablets, and thou shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant, thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria, and the planters shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchman upon the mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye and let us go up on Zion, unto Zion, unto the Elohim, uh, unto, unto Adonai Elohim. For thus saith the Adonai, Sing with gladness of Yahweh, and the shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Adonai, or O Yahuwah, have saved thy people, the remnant of Israel. That's the elect, folks. That remnant spoken of here in Jeremiah are those that were scattered. He's going to call them back. Behold, I will bring them from the north country. Let me just tell you, the north country here, Zophon, is the same word as hidden. Therefore, I, I present to you today that there are no lost tribes Yet, they are hidden by Yahuwah. Because they can only be lost to us, us as humans, who lost track of genealogies. Uh, but the creator of the universe, there is nothing hidden from him. You understand? So what was, what was scattered by the creator, he will again gather. There's a gathering. Gabbats. So let's hear. Behold, I will bring them from the north country. The hidden country. 
and I will gather them from the coasts of the earth, and I will gather them with the blind, with the lame, and here. This is really important. Remember uh, where it talks in the Revelation about those who are with child? Listen to this. The woman with child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither, and they shall come weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, and they shall not stumble, for I am their father to Israel, and Ephraim my firstborn son, from Joseph. Hear ye the word of, El of Yahuwah, O ye nations, and declare at the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel shall gather him and keep him, as a shepherd doth his flock. You ought to get excited about that. For the Adonai hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and they shall flow together into the goodness of Yahuwah for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock of the herd, and their soul shall be watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Praise Yahuwah. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old men together, for I will turn their mourning into joy, and I will comfort them and make them rejoice in their sorrow. And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith Yahuwah. Thus saith Adonai, as a voice was heard from Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. And thus said uh, the Adonai, Refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from the tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Adonai. And they shall come again from the land of the enemy. They were scattered into the tares. There were tares among them. And there is hope in thine end, saith Yahuwah, that thy children shall come again to their own border. And I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus, Thou hast chastened me, and I was chastened, as the bullock uncustomed to the yoke. Turn thou to me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Elohim, uh, Yahuwah my Elohim. Surely after that I was turned and I repented and after I was instructed. He repented and he was instructed. That word there is Torah. And I smote upon my thigh and was ashamed, yea, even confounded there, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I have spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him, and I will surely have mercy upon him, saith Yahuwah. Set thee up way marks, make thee high heaps, and set thine art toward the highway, even the way which thou wentest. Turn again, O virgin of Israel, turn again to these thy cities. And how long wilt thou go about, O backsliding daughter? For the Adonai hath created a new thing on the earth. A woman shall encompass a man. And thus say it, the Elohim, the Adonai of Elohim, the Elohim of Israel, as yet they shall use this speech of the land of Judah. And in the cities thereof, I shall bring again their captivity. And the Adonai bless thee, O inhabitant of justice, O inhabitant of justice. The mountain of holiness. Remember those two words, mountain and justice. I want to show you something on this table we're going to look at in just a minute. Boy. Hmm. Hmm. 
this is deep this is deep right here folks Jeremiah in a time of right at right at the, the when they were going into captivity he was telling and just was giving them hope he was prophesying this would come and these are the days we're in mm, this is deep and there shall dwell in Judah itself and all the cities thereof a husbandman and they shall th and they that go forth with flocks for I have satiate the weary soul and I have replenished the sorrowful soul every sorrowful soul and upon this I awakened there's a word 2009 there was an awakening and beheld my sleep was sweet unto me behold the days come said Yahweh that I will make a new covenant that's Brit Hadishah that is a new covenant that's a new testament with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in that day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt which my covenant they break although I was a husband to them saith Yahuwah but this shall be the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days saith the Yahuwah and I will put my law in their inward parts. It will put it in you. You will know it. Did that drive to want to know him deeper in his feasts and his statutes and his covenants? That's it. He will put it in your heart. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, the Elohim, for they shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahuwah. For I have forgiven their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This, this is the fulfillment, this is the fullness of of his grace here he will remember the sin no more our sins are forgiven because of Yeshua thus saith Yahuwah which giveth the sun for light by day and the ordinance of the moon and the stars by for the light by night which divided the sea and the waves thereof roar the, Elo, the, the Adonai of Elohim is his name if these excuse me if these ordinances depart from me, saith Yahuwah, the seed of Israel shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus saith Yahuwah, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth stretched out beneath, I will also cast off the seed of Israel for all they have done, saith Yahuwah. Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that a city shall be built unto Yahuwah for a tower of Hananiel unto the gate of the corner and by the measuring line shall be set forth over against it hill gallery and shall encompass the growth of to Goth and the whole valley of dead bodies and the ashes in the fields of, uh, to the brook of Kidron upon the corner of the horse gate to the east shall be holy unto Yahuwah and it shall not be plucked up nor thrown down forevermore. And that is that is part of the new covenant. Now back to who the elect are, and I want you to see this. The scriptures de de declare Israel is not cast off forever, and we know this from Hosea. You go read Hosea; she went off whoring after idols. But you know from the from the story of Hosea. And he caused me to live that story to understand. Unconditional love is the reason. He brings them back again. Unconditional love. He loved them with an everlasting love. He loves us with that. That's you and me, folks. That is the church. If they went into Egypt, 75, and came out, 11 million, what happens in 2730 years it has to be in the hundreds of millions and who are over those who will be leading those out those are sealed the hundred and forty four thousand those are the priests those that are going to be preaching when you see tribulation now let's go and look at the table 
and I hope you stuck it out this long because here we go. And I'm going to just shut off. I was going to turn the camera on, but I just didn't like it. Here, let me just show you this. And uh, there, there's really um, an amazing anomaly here is where the location of gather the elect. It only happens one time. It is only there one time in the, in the, in the uh, code. The, le the elect are gathered. Excuse me. But I want to show you something here. Uh, we are in. This is Ezra beginning up here. We're very small scale. 1593. And at first I thought it might have been like a date or something. So if anybody wants to go search that year out. 1593. Why that may be significant. Uh, I didn't have time to do that. Because uh, there are farm life going on around me. So uh, I have to... Uh, take into consideration other things. Anyway, here we are. Uh, there's several vertical anomalies here. We got Holocaust, Rapture, uh, Hebrew, and we got Widow, and this right here, which is amazing, uh, laterally, we've got Baharetz, Israel, the land of Israel, but vertically, going up, we have a mountain of, of Yiddish blood. Mountain of Yiddish blood. And w look at this. You say, well, what is that? It's got to be the Holocaust, right? Holocaust is here a couple of times. Here's a very small skip there. But you see right here, this is Holocaust. And let me just blow this up a little bit, folks. Bear with me here. Just a minute. Here we go. Because uh, I know it kind of blurs out with it in the video that on YouTube, the colors kind of bleed out, so just blow it up so it's a little more clear, because I want you to get this. Uh, the elect are gathered. Asaf, Asaf, right there. But look what Asaf is. That's Ephraim. Ephraim. The elect are gathered, and there's Ephraim right there. How about that? And look what crosses over uh, Ephraim. Remember I said, remember mountain? Well, that's Har, and then we got it down here again, Har, the mountain of Yiddish blood, and we got Hari, which is, um, it's like saying, behold, with with an explana explanation point, or it's like, listen, with an exclamation point, listen, so we have mountain, listen, and justice, right there at the top, Remember, that, was the, that was the other one. Um, but uh, we also have in the day of, of Yeshua, in the day of Yeshua, right there. In that one line, we also got Yeshua here. Uh, Natsri, which is a Christian. Uh, you would think the elect would, you know, I was running words like uh, church and Christian and believer and things like that. Uh, Ephraim, direct, I mean, you're talking about proximity and smaller skip. It's right there. It's no, without a doubt, it's Ephraim. That's you and me. The church, not three, in Jerusalem, there, right next to a vertical of Holocaust. Uh, we got restored, uh, restoration in the blue here, and uh, Ed Olam, which is a witness unto the world. Uh, that same word is over here as well in the peak, which is uh, restoration. A restoration. Uh, uh, Congregation uh, the, 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 of the Great Assembly, right here. Uh, we have this is interesting. Obama's name in here, backwards, right here. But look what, what it's on top of. Benai, Wa, Nephilim, the children of the Nephilim, the children of the fallen is what it is. Um, we also got scattered that runs right through there, sharing the pay in Nephilim. Uh, this is interesting. We have over here with the widow, uh, the coal rob, which is um, like a con the, the, the gathering of the congregation, the assembly. Um, over here we have America, which is one thing interesting about this. And because of where we are, and by the way, the scriptures that we are this is Ezra. And then we get into Chronicles 1 and 2. These are like genealogies. So this is a pretty amazing that we're finding gather the elect or the elect are gathered in 
coded in the genealogies of who? Ephraim, Manasseh, and the rest of the nations. That's where it is. This is where the code is. We've got patriarchs in the blue here, and vertically we have Hebrew, and then we have uh, a word for um, the assembly or, the, or to gather. Uh, what else it was here? Uh, the Ark of Yahuwah, the Ark of the Covenant. We also got um, a harvest word right there, harvest. We also got uh, Bokori, which is first fruits. We got there, first fruits, Bokori. And let's see what else we have is uh, Kabbats is here. What is Kabbats? Kabbats is to gather. It is a harvest term. Where is it? And I just found it, folks. So, actually, the, the Holy Spirit stopped me. Well, I was going to make a video, and he, there it is right there. No box. No, uh, which is uh, of the harvest. Of the harvest, stopping right there with Ephraim, and they're going vertical. Uh, which is the word I was looking for. <laughs> was here. And here's the same thing, the first fruits in blue, same words right there. But uh, I want to take you to the verse we have here, which is in Ezra. And this, and this is after captivity, folks, during the restoration of uh, these people who were in captivity. 9.13 is where we are in Ezra. And this is the really only the, the only significant verse I saw that was uh, citable. The rest of it is just really genealogy. So, uh, th but this was significant in any case because this is what happens after they were called out, when they were called back out of captivity. And let's just start here. Now, therefore, give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take the daughters of your, of, unto your sons, nor speak their peace, their wealth forever that ye may be strong and eat of the good of the land and leave for an inheritance to your children forever. And after all that has come upon us for all our evil deeds, and this is their re re remembering what happened to them, when all the punishment for their evil deeds and for, the gr and for our great trespass, seeing that thou, our Elohim, has punished us less than our iniquities deserve, now hast given us such deliverance as this. Should we again break thy commandments, and join the affinity with the people of these abominations, would thou not be angry with us until thou hast consumed us, so that there should not be no remnant nor escaping? O Lord, Yahuwah of Israel, thou art righteous, for we remain yet escaped, as it is this day. Behold, we are are before thee in our trespass. But we cannot stand before thee because of this. And now Ezra had prayed when he had confessed and weeping, casting himself down before the house of Yahuwah. There was an assembly unto him, uh, unto him out of Israel with a great, great congregation, congregation, excuse me, the great multitude of men and women and of children, for they wept very sore. And I want to skip down to 10 3 and see what happens. Because when they come out, they had mingled. The wheat had mingled with the tares, and they cannot be. The righteous cannot take an unrighteous wife or pagan wife. As in what was had here, the men were uh, called out on it. But there, now, therefore, let us make a, a covenant with our Elohim and put away all the wives with such as were born of them, according to the counsel of my Elohim, of, of my Adonai, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our Elohim, and let it be done according to the law, and arise for this matter, belong unto thee, and we also be with thee, for be of courage and do it. And accord, according really to this, uh, you could see a parallel in your own lives, and I know a handful right now, 
where who has 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 even me i'm talking to myself too where in the circumstances of your life that are in his control separated you from the unrighteous from those who were who wanted to follow after vanity follow after material things and not the creator of the universe it's very tragic that is what has happened brother gary uh what's the other brother uh, tim harpazo we're all in the same boat but what does he do he gathers this together with those that are called by his name the same ones so he is severing sheep and goat and he is gathering the elect even in this day and here's the code is it's confirming that in the middle of the genealogies here so i find that an amazing fact of, of the code confirming Ephraim behold or listen so there you go folks in under an hour we're stopping at 56 minutes so <laughs> I really hope that you stuck in and, and looked at that oh and I just about forgot look this is amazing here and I apologize I missed a word in Holocaust here we also have the name Hitler by the way in pink Hitler very same line with judgment so the land of Israel uh, the mountain of Yiddish blood Holocaust all right here in the skin coated in the same place where gather the elect is uh, so there you go folks I want to thank those that are supporting this ministry the kickoff to the online e-commerce uh, uh, store to support this ministry is been a success and, and it's been a joy to put together those products for you we've gotten just about all the orders that have come in or have gotten out we're still waiting on lantern i mean uh, uh, lamps to be uh, delivered from israel but you know we are in the holidays so those things can take some time so be patient if you've ordered something it is on its way uh, and if you haven't already support this mini ministry with your uh, donation uh, if you will we're trying to get a message out into the world uh, i've had to turn down three different uh, in invitations to different conferences and uh, there's one coming up in Dallas I'm not going to be able to make unless there's funds there um, but we'll see so uh, if this channel is blessing you if you're getting something out of it and I'm trying to get the tables in there too folks I know I'm doing Maccabees and other things we'll, we'll try to post those on uh, the other channel that, that I've started to kind of keep it codes over here but I appreciate your, your patience and, uh, you know it looks like I've lost some subscribers from doing other things over here so uh, I'll try to streamline it back to coach but uh, this is the foundation and where everything had started so uh, just uh, forgive me for that <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm being broad but not trying to be too broad in things that we're looking at over here because some people just want to look at codes and that's it so uh, you can't make everybody happy and I've learned that but anyway here we go under an hour. Shalom and may Yahuwah bless you.